Right, so welcome to lesson seven of the Bioenergetics Unit of Work, and this lesson is on exercise. So make sure, obviously, you've got notes from previous lessons, could make make um, reference to them during this, and also you've got pen, pencil, you've got printout of the um, workbook, uh, digital copy, working on a computer, or um, just a blank notebook in which you're making um, your own notes and answering questions in that respect. So first uh, step, as always, onto the lesson seven exercise page. Can you start by having a look at the knowledge check questions on the next page or so. Pause the video now at this point, refer back to previous um, lessons work and see how many of these questions you can answer um, either researching the answers or just from memory in terms of what you've learned so far. So pause the video now and have a go at that please. Right, so hopefully you've had a go at that and unpause the video because so, you want answers to those questions. So if we go through them nice and quickly, define the term anaerobic. So anaerobic is respiration without oxygen. What are the um, products of anaerobic respiration in yeast? They are carbon dioxide, CO2 and ethanol. Identify two uses of anaerobic respiration in, ye in um, yeast. So it is production of alcohol and bread. Now, in the previous lesson, what was the variable that was changed in the experiment that we looked at? And you will have found that that was the change in temperature. Now, why... Um, Identify why the data can't be reliable from the previous experiment, last lesson, because there were no repeats of the experiment done. State the purpose of the test tube at room temperature in the last experiment. So it acted as a control to compare other results against. Looking back to um, plant cell structure, uh, what is it the what does the vacuole in the plant cell contain? So it contains nutrients, water, and cell sap. And then on the final knowledge check question, what is diffusion? Diffusion is the movement of particles. from areas of high to low concentration. So movement of particles from areas of high to low concentration. So this lesson is looking at how the body reacts to increasing levels of exercise and also looking at how the heart and breathing rates, breath volume as well, changes and how muscle fatigue occurs due to these changes. So, if we just have a look at the first paragraph here and go through some of this. So, if we just start off. Right. So, it says, we've looked at how the body gains energy transferred from the chemical reaction of respiration occurring in the mitochondria. So, remember, we call the mitochondria the site of aerobic respiration. Remember our two types of respiration are aerobic with oxygen and anaerobic without oxygen. It says this energy can be used to cause the muscle to contract, to, uh, to contract, enabling us to move. Now, the little idea just to understand what happens when you have a muscle moving. Now, Muscle is made up of lots of fibers. Two types. Draw out a little diagram like this for me. Now, what we have here is we have thick filaments that are part of your muscle. And we have thin filaments. 
So when a muscle contracts, these move over each other. So the muscle contracts and these filaments overlap even more. So the movement of these filaments in and out, in and out, in and out, is when muscles contract and relax, contract and relax, depending on what type of movement that we're doing. So, we just carry on with that for a moment. When you exercise, certain muscle groups will move more often than the other, so they will need to have a higher level of energy and therefore a higher rate of respiration. So the thing is, they need these energy, they need this energy, need energy for contraction and relaxation of muscle fibers. Right. To increase the rate of respiration, you, there, you need to increase the amount of the reactants. Remember, oxygen and glucose react together during respiration. When you're exercising, you can't be eating to take in more glucose, but you can increase the amount before you exercise by eating a filling meal. Your body can also access the glycogen, which is a stored version of glucose, in your liver to increase your glucose levels. So remember, glycogen, storage molecule. Remember, the movement of glucose to glycogen and glycogen to glucose is controlled by insulin and glucagon, which if you remember are both hormones. So, a little bit about exercise. What I want you to do now is just pause the video and underneath, click on the first video link for video one and just make some notes from that video while you're watching it on um, how you can investigate the effect of exercise on your body. Have a look at that video now. Pause this one, click on the link to video one, and have a look and make some notes on what it says about how you can investigate the effect of exercise on the body. Right, good. Hopefully you've unpaused the video and you have done the task involved in video one. And so let's move on to our next section. Increasing rate. So, to increase the rate of respiration, you will also need to increase the amount of oxygen in your body. The first step is to is the first step to this is increasing the blood flow. Remember, if you've got more blood flowing, you've got more red blood cells carrying oxygen to where is needed more quickly. Let's bear that in mind. That's why blood flow is important. And in order to get blood moving around your heart and moving around your body, your heart rate increases as your heart muscle contracts more often and beats faster. Which is what therefore moves blood faster. Now, as your body is demanding more respiration, your breathing rate increases so that more oxygen is entering your bloodstream. Remember, how is oxygen entering your bloodstream? Because it is taken in by the lungs and exchanged with blood vessels at the alveoli.
with your air sacs in your lungs. So the volume of your breath changes as well as the increase of the level of oxygen. You breathe faster, but shallower breaths. The reason why you're trying to do that is because you're trying to get more oxygen quicker. Now, lack of oxygen. As looked at last lesson, if there's not enough oxygen, the aerobic respiration cannot happen. If your body is exercising too vigorously and the rate of aerobic respiration is not high enough, then your muscle switches to carrying out anaerobic respiration. So, for example, if it isn't producing enough energy, it moves to anaerobic respiration. It's why athletes train at high altitude. So why athletes train at high altitude? So it makes their bodies use oxygen more efficiently. Makes use of oxygen makes use of oxygen more efficient when there's less of it. Now, so because it carries out anaerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration, as we remembered, is less efficient and causes buildup of the poison lactic acid in your muscles, which causes a lot of pain in your muscles. Which remember we identified as muscle cramps last lesson the other issue to anaerobic respiration is that the muscle becomes fatigued tired and stops contracting efficiently the lactic acid is then transferred to your liver where more oxygen is used to oxidize the lactic acid back to glucose remember oxygen breaks it down And the amount of oxygen needed to break it down is what we call the oxygen debt. Good. So a little bit of explanation there. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and use what you've just gone through. Use those notes. Use the information. Let's have a look at this question. Lactic acid buildup is a concern for marathon runners, but it's not an important consideration for sprinters. Explain why. So pause the video. Have a go at that question, using any of the information you've got, using any additional research you want to do, then we'll just go through the answers when you unpause the video. Right, good. Hopefully you've unpaused the video and you've had a go at this question. So let's go through where you begin your marks. Now, let's think to begin with about sprinters. Now, think about the amount of energy that sprinters need. They need lots of energy quickly. Now, because they do that, they will anaerobically respire. But think about the time of the race. Because the race is so quickly, there's not time for lactic acid to build up. So there's not time for lactic acid to build up before the race is over and cause cramps. Now let's think about marathon runners. They need muscles to work effectively for much longer. Because they're running further distance over a longer period of time. Now, if they have greater oxygen usage, so if oxygen usage is greater than oxygen uptake. They haven't got enough to do aerobic respiration, so they start to do anaerobic respiration and lactic acid is produced. Now, 
And so if lactic acid builds up, muscles can no longer contract efficiently and it cause cramp. Good. So if you need to pause the video and you can just make note of those points, mark your answer, correct anything that you didn't get quite right. Once you've gone through all of these notes and made sure you've got them down in your own form, go on to the next page. Right. A little bit of an exercise for you. To demonstrate muscle fatigue and anaerobic respiration, take your index finger and point it forwards. And then upwards. And then forwards. Like this. Upwards and forwards and 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 so on. I want you to keep doing that. I want you to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And don't stop. Because eventually, it's going to get so painful that you're going to have to stop. It might take a little while, but you need to keep doing it as much as you can. And while you're doing that, I want you to think about what's actually happening in the muscles around the base of your hand and around your fingers. So while you're doing that, I'm going to go through with you what is happening in your muscles. Okay, keep doing that. Keep doing that. So what's happening in your muscles? First thing. Muscle or muscle filaments are continually contracting and relaxing. So this requires energy. So what process is your um, the muscles in your fingers doing? So the muscles are therefore carrying out aerobic respiration. But as you keep doing that continually, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, reaches a point where energy me and energy needs aren't met. So therefore your muscles start to anaerobically respire, breaking down glucose to energy and lactic acid. A lactic acid, acid, acid. So lactic acid is made and builds up. And what does it do to the muscles? It causes fatigue. So the muscles fatigue and cramp up. It's a perfect example of what's happening and how this process occurs within your body. Good, so what you, hopefully you've still done that, still done that, still done that. And stop now, pause the video and obviously make sure you've got that down, but hopefully that explains the process to you. Once you've done that, go to the next page. Now, another little activity for you. Carry out an investigation to, to, into how exercise affects the body. You will need to calculate your resting heart rate and your resting breath rate. Then carry out three minutes of intensive exercise and repeat to calculate your breathing heart rate. So, what I'd like you to do. Count in and out. Number of breaths per minute. So, one, two, and so on. Count that out before you've done any exercise. Pop your finger either on your wrist, I can't because my bracelets, or on your neck, and count the number of heartbeats per minute. We've done that for both of them. Go run around the block, go do three minutes of sit-ups, press-ups, whatever. Your own form of exercise. Come back and do the same thing for each of them. What do you think your results are? Why do you think the results are what you have? What is happening to your muscles at cause effect? So you'd know, you would expect 
each to go up after exercise. You'd expect each to go up after exercise, wouldn't you? Now, the question is, why? What's happening in your muscles? So the key thing is, heart rate is increased to move blood carrying oxygen more quickly to cells for respiration. And your breathing rate is quicker but shallower. They're not deep breaths, are they? Because your body is trying to get oxygen into the blood at a quicker rate in order to meet needs for aerobic respiration. Good. And the last thing I'd like to do is, again, pause the video, watch video two in the links below, and just have a go at answering that question below, thinking about marathon runners and why do they react the way they do once they fall over the finish line? Thinking about muscles, thinking about the build up of lactic acid, thinking about um, energy needs, thinking about anaerobic respiration, thinking about muscle cramps. Just do that independently and see what you can come up with. Pause the video and do that now. Right, good, hopefully you've done that and that will give you a little way of summarizing some of the ideas that we've looked at. The last thing I'd like to do is simply pause the video and have a go at the knowledge and application questions on the final page to finish off. Once you have done that, we'll go through the answers to finish. Right. Good. So, hopefully you've unpaused the video and we'll go through these to finish. Define the term resting heart rate. So, it's your heart rate when not exercising. State the product of anaerobic respiration in muscle cells, as we've said, lactic acid. What is the oxygen debt or oxygen debt? It's the amount of oxygen needed to break down or to oxidize lactic acid back into glucose. What is muscle fatigue? It is muscle tiredness. So muscles don't contract efficiently. Identify how breathing rate affects respiration levels. So, increase in breathing rate, what's it gonna do? To the amount of oxygen. Increase oxygen to the blood. And what's that going to do? It's hopefully going to be used by the cells and increase the rate of respiration. Suggest why athletes train and prepare at high altitudes. Because there's less oxygen there. And why is that important? Conditions body to use the oxygen more efficiently. Why is anaerobic respiration less efficient? Because it produces less energy. Now what is gas exchange and where does it take place? It takes place in the alveoli or between the alveoli and blood vessels. And it's transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide between them. And then finally, define osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of water. 
and it's from a high to low concentration and it's via a partially permeable membrane. So a membrane with lots of small holes in it that lets water through, but not necessarily other substances. Good, so pause the video, make sure you've marked those questions yourself, gone through them, and then we'll finish there.